<laughs> there we are. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Michael. I'm your lecturer for today. So thank you so much for showing up. Um, it's a little different, isn't it? You know, here I am in a cafe. Here you are at home. We're all learning together in this weird kind of way. This isn't your regular Zoom call, so I don't, you don't have to worry about turning anything on or off. And you guys can just sit and relax and then it's a YouTube show just for you guys. So I've got your comments right over there. Make sure that you guys interact with me. Otherwise, you're just going to see me here waving my hands around, not knowing if you guys understand what's going on. But if you guys interact and let me know what you're thinking, you answer the few questions that I'm going to ask throughout the show. We'll play some games together. We'll learn a little bit about conditioning. And who knows what will happen? Maybe we'll even have a little bit of fun. All right. So hello, Rachel. Hello, Tiffany. Hello, Siobhan. Achuk. Thank you so much, everyone. I've got you guys all coming in here, so let's have a little bit of fun. So today we are going to be using a game called Rat Zone. So let's just flip right into that right now so you guys can see what this game is all about. As you can see, this game uses augmented reality, so I will lift up my phone and you will see all of the gear everywhere. So to avoid that, I'm going to play without AR today. But you guys, if you have a phone that's new enough, you guys can use the augmented reality function and play along with the game, which will be a little bit more fun for you guys. So, um, this is Rat Zone. We're going to be using and creating our own, or conditioning our own rat. To get this game going, let's just tap through the beginning and you hit the tap to continue button, whether you're in augmented reality land or in you are in this regular screen. And when you hit that, you'll be able to name your rat. Name your rat whatever you like. Let's be a little bit kind though. You know, we don't want that rat to have a really sad kind of name. So I'm going to name my rat. Uh, see, this is what happens. I'm not very creative when it's a spur of the moment kind of thing. Radicus, that's terrible. But you know, we're going with it. Uh, it's done now. But now this is the main part. What I want you guys to do is add in this class code. I'm gonna keep bringing it up because it's gonna disappear in a little bit, but it's gotta be exactly like you see on screen. All right, so bio 3011-2020. I forgot the S. Eh, mistakes happen. It's still going to work. So let's put that in all in lowercase. Remember, it's got to be all in lowercase. B-I-O. Bring that up one more time because it's going to keep disappearing. 3011. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, 2020. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Multitasking is very, very hard. So make sure you put that in. That's the class code. I'll leave that on screen just so everyone can see my class code matches that one below. I want you guys to do the same. Make sure it matches. So that way we actually have all your data that's gonna appear on this dashboard that we're going to be checking out in a little bit. Uh, test subject one, oh man. That's a, that's a kind of a sad rat name. Poor, poor test subject one. So, but it works, you know. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we'll hit done there and hit save. Now, here, we're going to stop here just for a second. I'm going to zoom back out for a second because we're going to talk about these two types of conditioning. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's zoom out. Oops. I'll zoom out this way again. Sorry, I've messed up there. All right. So what we have here is two different types of conditioning. So first off, lucky I brought my whiteboard with me. You know, it's what I always do when I go to a cafe. You never know when you're going to have to teach a lesson. So the first thing we're talking about is conditioning. That thing will disappear in a second. Let's just make it go away. There we go. Talking about conditioning today. So what is conditioning? The idea of getting an individual to respond to a specific stimulus, right? You guys don't have kids, so you don't know how this works, but our kids condition us to do all kinds of things for them all the time. 
I've noticed that throughout my entire parent rearing life. You'll notice it once you guys have kids, if you guys decide to do that. But we're going to talk about two specific types of conditioning. One is Pavlovian, right? And that comes, I'm just going to check. Yeah, just to restart, don't worry. We're going to be, thank you very much, Jeremy, for throwing that in for Olivia. That's the class code. I appreciate that you guys are helping back me up. It makes it a little bit easier. I'll keep checking that chat as we go along as well. So the first type of conditioning is Pavlovian conditioning. Now that was when a Russian scientist named Ivan Pavlov realized that he could train dogs to salivate. Or what he noticed was dogs would salivate every time he brought them food. Now, what he did, so there was this, oh, so let me step back and say, what there was was this neural connection between, oh, here comes food, I see the food coming, and they already start salivating. So there was already that connection between those two kinds of behaviors or the stimulus and a response. And what Ivan did is he rang a little bell every time the dogs were going to get fed. You guys probably know the story, but just in case. So you ring the bell, you bring up the food, they would salivate and they would eat the food. Shortly after, if you do that enough times, just ringing the bell would result in the dog salivating because they would think food was coming. So what you've done is if you've inserted a stimulus into this neural response relationship, right in between that, and that results in the stimulus, and in this, in this instance, the bell, resulting in the same kind of response as bringing food out. So later on, Ivan didn't even have to bring food out, you just ring the bell and the dog would start salivating. So that is a Pavlovian response. So let me know if you guys have any questions out of that all makes sense. Hopefully I've said that clearly enough. <coughs> Pardon me. I'll have this cough. Don't worry. It's not coronavirus. You guys won't get it from me. It's totally fine. So the second type of conditioning is instrumental conditioning. So this is when you're trying to reinforce a specific behavior through a, um, either a reward or a punishment. We stick on the idea with dogs again because everyone seems to love dogs so much. What we could do, and there goes one of my lights. I think you guys can still see me just fine. So, um, if you want to teach a dog to shake his paw or her paw, then you would shake the paw and you'd give them a reward. And then you'd keep doing that over and over again until that dog is trained to lift up his hand instead of you having to grab it so they've learned to kind of shake. So this is where you're trying to create a new neural relationship between some kind of stimulus and another response. So those are the two types of conditioning. Does everyone kind of understand the two differences between Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning? I'll wait for you guys to let me know because obviously there's a little bit of lag for me letting the, all this information that I'm saying coming to you guys and a little time for you guys to respond. So please do let me know if nothing makes sense. I'll take a quick check. Um, you, know, you guys are already in the app? All right. So it sounds like some people are oh, Remy. Nice. I like that you named them Remy. That is one of my favorite Pixar movies. So that was very cool. So... Um, Looks like some of you guys are already in eating cake. I'm just going to say a couple more things just before we get straight into the game and we'll start playing. One of those things is that relationship that we have now that we've created between a stimulus and response for both Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning. Instrumental is, is also called operant, but we'll, call it, we'll keep it going instrumental conditioning. Yeah. Is the idea that that relationship can be cut or that it can extinguish. So, oh, after time, if you keep ringing that bell and not bringing food out, that dog will no longer respond to that bell because they learn that ringing the bell doesn't bring food any longer. And that is the same kind of thing for um, instrumental conditioning as well. That extinction can actually happen as well. So, 
Pavlovian conditioning, training a dog to salivate when it sees meringue with whipped cream and fruit. I don't know why you'd feed your dog that because that's something I would eat, Ben. That is delicious. That is unfair. I don't know. Maybe I want to live in your house because you have delicious food. But yes, that is the premise behind it. So they would see you whipping and they would realize that food is coming and they would start salivating. So nailed it. All right. So thank you for the thumbs up. Sounds like everyone's got the two. Oh yeah, there you go. I forgot to say that. Individuals forget the association. I'm going to ask you a couple questions and I'm not expecting you guys to answer this right now, but what I want you guys to do is think about this as we go through a little bit of the game and maybe we'll get back to these questions at the end. And one of these questions is, we've got instrumental and we've got Pavlovian conditioning. Should conditioning occur at the same rate in both those? Another way of asking that is, should conditioning happen as quickly in both Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning. That's something we'll be able to test, but I want you guys to have a think in the back of your head of whether you think these could be the same or they could be different and why they may be different. Okay? Remember, Pavlovian is you already have that neural connection and instrumental you're creating that neural connection. And the second question I'll ask you is similar in a similar vein, and that is should extinction of that relationship between stimulus and response occur faster in one type of conditioning than the other? All right, so we'll test both those two questions right now as we train our rats to do the stuff that we want them to do. So let's go in back into our game and have a little bit of fun. Oh, Ben, I see you went with the Pavlova pun. Ah, I was so stressed out of doing such a good job in this YouTube stream that I didn't catch that pun. That's terrible. It is a great pun, and I feel terrible that I did not see that pun. It makes me very, very sad. I shall punish myself later so I can recognize all of your puns from now on. All right, so... We've got two types of conditioning, right? Pavlovian and instrumental. Now we've got to split the class into two because, of course, we've got to run both of these experiments. So let's do it by the alphabet. A to K, do Pavlovian. L to Z, do instrumental. I, always, I do this all the time. We separate the class by letters, and I always freak out that I'm going to forget a letter or accidentally forget what the alphabet actually is, but I think I nailed it that time, so I'm pretty impressed with myself. Hopefully you guys are the same. So A to K, let's hit Pavlovian, that's me. And L to Z, you guys hit instrumental. So remember, we're gonna be teaching, kind of taking advantage of this neural association that already exists between rats liking to eat food, and we're gonna insert a new stimulus for instrumental. And then, uh, for sorry, Pavlovian. And for instrumental, you guys are creating this new neural relationship, right? Uh, last name. We'll do last names because that's the way I was going. Kasumovic, sorry. Thank you very much for asking that, Devon. Uh, go team LZ, yes. Uh, thank you, yes, Rachel, Ashley, and Juliet, sorry. Last names. Thank you very much for bringing that up. So, I'm going to select chimes because... They sound great. You guys can uh, select lights, or you guys are an instrumental, you can choose either one of those conditioning types. So I'm going to select my wind chimes, and there's this weird thing there. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna hit continue there. So hopefully everyone has the app and is playing along. Um, now you gotta, the idea here now is you wanna condition your rat to the stimulus that you guys have chosen. You can actually see, um, we'll tap to continue, you can actually see how your conditioning actually happens as you go along. So now you have these cake, this rat that you have, Radicus is my rat, he likes cake. So you gotta collect all the cake from the cake bots, and then when you have enough cake, you can feed your rat the cake. And that's how we will end up uh, making sure that the cake, that the rat is, becomes 
um, condition to the stimulus. So I have my cake there, so I have to tap my wind chimes. Tap the wind chimes, and then I'm going to throw the cake to little old Radicus over there. He sees the cake. He's heard the wind chimes. He sees the cake. Goes, mmm, that has some delicious cake. Maybe it was a pavlova, Ben. I don't know. It's possible. It kind of looks a little bit like one, a little bit. But anyway, so I'm going to collect some more cake bots. You guys do the same. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, my. It's, it's, it's going to be, what's the class code? I'll bring the class code one more time. The class code is that. Thank you very much, though. Uh, Terry, ah, oh, Terry, you joined us. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's so great that you're, you joined little old me in this YouTube live show. Much appreciated, man. That's some love out there, brother. All right. So we will keep going on. And so if you tap that screen, you can actually see how your rat is being conditioned to the stimulus. So I need to get some more cake from my cake bots, but now they've stopped disappearing. So I'm going to, whoa, secret cake. All right, there are my cake bots. All right, I'm going to collect some more cake, but first I got to hit those wind chimes, and then I got to feed Radicus my cake. So he sees the cake again. Excellent. I'm going to keep collecting some more cake. You guys tell me what you guys are doing and how you guys are going along with the cake collecting and how that's working out for you guys. So thanks for the smiley face, Terry. And I'm going to collect some more cake from my cake bots. I don't know if you guys are doing it. Anymore. I'm curious how many people are actually doing an augmented reality as well, because we had to do a major fix on the game because there were so many Android devices that actually weren't working with the augmented reality. So, but you know, such as Google, what can you do? I'm going to hit this secret cake. All right, then. All right, secret cake. I think I see what you're doing here, secret cake. So, just snack, smack my wind chimes, fed Radicus, and I am going to collect a little bit more cake from these cake bots. But I see something's going on here. You can't feed your rat, and Remy is starving. Make sure you hit your stimulus there, like the wind chimes or the light or whatever it is, so that you can flip the cake towards your rat. I'm going to grab some secret cake. And I'm going to hit my wind chimes again. Then I'm going to flip some cake over. So you got to make sure that you have to hit that stimulus. Oh, man. Don't, don't worry about it, iTunes. I don't need to update anything. So make sure you hit that stimulus before you feed the cake. Otherwise, your little rat, Radicus or Remy, is not going to learn the association between the food and the stimulus. So, yeah, there are a lot of cake bots. But they're secret cake. There's secret cake, Jonathan. So I'm going to hit those wind chimes again and feed my rat. And how hard are you tapping the screen at your fingers hurt, Jonathan? Jeez, man, you tap them a little bit lightly. This is touch sensitive, my man. You don't have to hurt yourself. So all good. I got Remy's cake in the end. Nice. Very happy, Nora, that Remy is not starving. That is uncool. So there's, now there's no more secret cake. I'm going to go to the cake bots then see what the cake bots are doing. Collect a little bit more cake on these cake bots. I actually want cake bots in my home if they're going to bring me cake like this. Excellent. Cake bar is full. Hit that stimulus and give Radicus a little bit of extra cake. Now this kid, this rat's going to be very obese by the end of this. Feels like a very cruel experiment. Oh, secret cake. No more secret. Cake. This is not fair. So I'm just going to keep getting cake from my cake bots. How are you guys doing over there? Have you guys conditioned your rat yet? That's what I'm curious about. Ooh, I've got uh, oh, I've got enough cake. Wind chime cake there. I'm gonna get some secret cake after that. Secret cake is not there anymore. So Olivia, my rat just became huge. 
Probably from all the cake. We're feeding a rat a lot of cake. Oh, there's no more secret cake. Okay then. So I'm gonna hit, so these are my bars of how my rat has been conditioned. As you can see, the rat is getting better and better at responding to my wind chimes. So I'm gonna go collect a little bit more cake and get cake bar full. Okay, wind chime time, throw the cake. No more secret cake. All right, secret cake machine. I think I've got your days are numbered. So we'll collect a little bit more cake from these cake bots and start feeding my little guy. Oh man, this guy really loves cake. So let's hit those wind chimes and give him his cake. So he does all right. Your rat's not doing anything, Rosa. Oh, have you hit the wind chimes? It looks like, Julia, you've got the same issue. Have you hit the wind chimes? Um, because you got to make sure you hit that stimulus before you actually feed them. And you want to check to see how that, how that um, reaction time graph is going as well, because you'll be able to see how your rat is being conditioned as you go along. So you can check that at any time to see how that is. So maybe Julia and Ben, you could check that. Oh no, maybe not Ben, Julia and Rosa. You can check that if you're having a problem, see if it's becoming conditioned. So I've now conditioned my rat and he's, be, you know, that conditioning has become extinguished as well. So we've gone through that whole cycle. And if we take a look at my data, you can actually see, it took him a really long time, here it is, on this bar, right? to actually get realize that stimulus of the wind chimes was associated with the food coming. But then he got better at it at 43, then got to 18, then to 21, 11, 18, 10 seconds. So that association got real good and real quick, the three seconds, and then started becoming extinguished again because I just started ringing the the, um, oops, I'll close that, bring in that, and not giving him any food. Look at that. Now he's becoming, ex you know, that whole thing is becoming extinct. So no more secret cake for you either. My rat already forgot the connection. Mine's still on 60 plus, I think he forgot. <laughs> so just keep ring ringing your stimulus when you want to get them extinguished uh, or get that, that relationship extinct and then they'll forget. Hopefully you guys are doing the same thing. Because I've stopped rewarding Radicus, it has forgotten the link between the chimes and receiving cake. Radicus will now ignore the chimes. So, but there's a twist. Oh no. Take a look at that while I bring up the data for the game, actually. <laughs> Is yours a dumb dog? I don't know about that. Let's see. Hold on. I will bring in. Let's see if I can actually get these data up. Da, 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 da. Where are we? I have so many classes to scroll through. I'll let you guys read that on your own. There it is. Let's see. All right, and we've got some cool data. So let's head straight into the data and we can take a look how everything looks. All right, now, hopefully, you guys have conditioned your rat. And let me know if you haven't conditioned your rat. I can check. Uh, these comments. I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Tapping, yeah, tapping the secret contraption does give you cake. Right. So that makes it a lot easier than having to hit all the cake bots. Now, there's a few of you that have become conditioned already. So maybe you notice what, uh, what was on the screen later. We weren't actually conditioning the rat. 
we were conditioning you the whole time to respond to the secret contraption. So those in the Pavlovian conditioning, you were being conditioned to respond to that secret contraption when it was going off and shaking, because that would give you secret cake. And the other folks, oh, you heard Latin, what is it, it was color, uh, confused. <laughs> Yes, that's right. It got confused. I didn't know that where the food was. That's right. So in the instrumental conditioning, you guys were being conditioned to keep checking the graph. And you were rewarded with cake every time you checked the graph within the game. So it, this is kind of the fun part. Because we were conditioning you the whole time, we actually have data on how quickly we ended up conditioning you guys to the secret contraption, which is the Pavlovian conditioning, or the checking the graphs out, which was the instrumental conditioning. And what you notice in that those first two, the first graph on the top is how long it took you to become conditioned. And on average, it ended up taking you guys 6.25 attempts before you became conditioned. And in the instrumental conditioning, it took you 7.75 attempts before you got conditioned. So you guys had, so in the Pavlovian response, you guys actually got conditioned more quickly. So that gets back to our first hypothesis, and we can talk about that in a little bit. You also, disassociated the stimulus from the response more quickly in the Pavlovian conditioning rather than the instrumental conditioning. So once you stopped getting cake from that secret contraption or stopped getting rewarded by pressing the graph, you guys stopped doing it. And you stopped doing it much more quickly in Pavlovian, as you notice there, no, sorry, there, than in the instrumental conditioning. I want to see what you guys are saying. So, Siobhan, it may not have worked on you if you, your, your rat never got to the end. And that may be for a bunch of different reasons. And we can actually talk about that a little bit more once uh, we go back to chatting. But I'll show you one more set of data um, here is this. So let me just see what you guys are saying. I checked the graph because the game told me to. I thought the secret cake thing was random. Ha! Nice! So you actually look like you didn't get conditioned because you didn't make that association between the stimulus and the response. So, let, actually, let's go back to this top figure because that leads into that question really, really nicely. Pavlovian conditioning happened a lot faster than the instrumental conditioning, and some people never got conditioned at all. Why do you guys think that in the Pavlovian conditioning, it would have happened more quickly? And it refers straight to Juliet's comment there. So take a look at what Juliet said, because that's really important. And that gives you a clue into why Pavlovian conditioning often happens much more quickly than instrumental conditioning. Right? So throw it up in the comments. I'd love to hear why you guys think one is happening more quickly than the other. <coughs> uh, sorry, A. Kaylee. I know, uh, hopefully, I know sometimes it is a little bit glitchy. My other phone, my actual phone, this iPhone is just for uh, the show that we do. My actual phone is really slow, and that's why it glitches on mine. So, yeah, I don't know. Secret cake is from checking the graph either. Okay, so can you guys think of why instrumental may be more difficult? to condition someone with than Pavlovian, all right? And that's exactly right, Tim. One is a natural response. Pavlovian, you're already working on a neural link that already exists. Food salivation. Tapping that thing that's shaking right in front of you is a really easy thing to do, and you get that reinforced, and you see that reward for doing that right away, and it's much, it happens much more quickly. 
for instrumental, that association or that link has to be learned. And as we noticed by some people in the class, they didn't learn that link at all because they didn't associate checking the graph with getting cake. And if you don't learn that association, you can't reinforce it and therefore it's more difficult to become conditioned. All right. So some of you guys were a lot more easier or a lot easier to condition than others, which is exactly what we would expect with this type of thing. And so Pavlovian simply associates another stimulus to a pre-existing stimulus that triggered the instinctive behavior. That's exactly it. Like I said, you're reworking those relationships that already occur, which is why it ends up working so well. Um, it's, and Chloe, it's not necessarily that it's hardwired in our brains. Um, and I guess, I guess in a way, technically it is because that neural connection does already exist. So it's not necessarily hardwired because that would imply that it always existed. Um, but it's something that does exist because that relationship, that connection between the two is kind of there. So well done, everyone. So, um, now we, we saw this extinction. I just want to, oops, let me just go. Um, oh, Juliet, would something like one of us having ADHD focus differentially uh, affect the outcome of attempt and conditioning? What do you guys think? I think it's a great question and it really brings out the, you know, uh, how important the environment is, genes and all these kinds of factors, how that can affect the relationship between a signal and the recognition of that signal. So absolutely, you know, not being able to associate those two things as quickly or as easily uh, would affect how likely someone is to becoming conditioned. Uh, and also probably how long it takes someone to become conditioned. Because technically we could have played this game for a half hour or an hour and maybe over a longer period of time you would have become condition because it would have provided, you would have had a longer period to make that association between the two. But that's exactly correct, Julia. If that association is difficult for an individual to recognize, it's going to be much more difficult to condition them. Right? So, he didn't care about the secret cake at all because I was so focused on mashing those cake pots. I hear you. The cake pots are awesome. Andrew did a great job in those cake pots. All right. So let's go for that one last figure is what I want to show you. Let me grab it here. And it is this one. So the average time to becoming conditioned. And that is, as you can see, uh, it takes a lot less time to become conditioned in the Pavlovian response than in the instrumental response, which is exactly kind of what we would expect. And this last graph, I think, is kind of neat because what it does is it shows you the progression over time, right? Um, and what we have is in, in Pavlovian conditioning, which is in green, we see those bars are a lot lower and we see that it, they become shallower much more quickly and they move towards zero much more quickly than the red bars, which refer to instrumental condition, right? So I'd love to hear, does all that kind of make sense to you guys? And please let me know. Tim, there is no cake, man. So I don't know what you're talking about with that cake. So let's head back to me here. Let's see if this button works. No. Oh my goodness, so much is going on. There I am. I am back. Too many stream changes, too much going on. All right. So. Hopefully, we kind of answered this question for you guys, and this now makes sense. Hopefully, you guys didn't realize you were being conditioned. That's part of the fun. Oh my God, I just blew you guys' minds. It's like Inception or something like that. Um, so, now you guys know a little bit more about how that association kind of works. So, you could probably start making some predictions about which things would be much more easily um, condi how, uh, what stimuli would be more useful to conditioning someone in different types of conditioning that you're actually trying to do. So let's see what we've got. Was this the whole thing a portal reference because the cake was a lie? Yes. 
Absolutely, kind of was. The cake is a lie, as Tim mentioned. So you guys let me know if you have any questions as we go along. You guys produce beautiful data, which I absolutely love. So the fact that those individuals that did get conditioned, you guys produced those data. Those that didn't get conditioned proved another point for us that sometimes not everybody can get easily conditioned to a stimulus like someone else. So it varies by genes, it varies by environment, and by genotype, by environment interaction, which is kind of cool. So um, that, I think that pretty much kind of wraps everything up unless you guys have any questions. So what I'll do is I'll just leave this on a little bit. I may yammer on a little while you guys have a second to ask any questions. But in the meantime, what I'd like to know is, did the game actually help you understand this concept? Does it make a little bit more sense because of that? Could I have done the exact same thing without the game? Or did you guys enjoy playing the game because it helped reinforce some of those concepts? And the reason why I ask that is because I create, or not me specifically, but my team and I end up creating these kinds of games to help students understand different concepts. Some of you guys, I think, may have uh, already been in my class before or will be in my class later on. And I use all kinds of different games to teach different concepts. So I'd love to hear from you guys. Please do let me know, did you like Rat Zone? A, and B, did it help you understand what I was trying to teach you guys today? And did seeing the data and going through the experience help reinforce some of the concepts about Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning? That will hopefully help you guys understand this con these concepts a little better, you know, for exams and for things like that. So, thank you. I'm glad you like the interactive uh, element. Thank you. Um, but the secret cake was confusing. Tiffany, fair enough. Um, but it did prove the point really nicely that some people got the secret cake and some didn't, which, you know, we could actually talk about what could be a better way to produce the secret cake to maybe make sure that everyone kind of becomes conditioned. I'd actually, I'd love to hear your opinion because what we could do is we could change the game to make sure that everyone recognizes that relationship between the secret cake and the contraption uh, to help everyone get uh, more conditioned. So I see these comments are coming up. Thank you so much. I'm going to read uh, some of them, but I won't be able to read them all. But these are, are, are really great and really important for me. So I'd love uh, anything positive and negative because it's only going to help us improve these kinds of games and I, you won't hurt my feelings too easily, I promise. Um, so, um, Tim, I found that it was really useful to show the difference between the two types. I was shaky before in the explanation but got it because the game also, your tech setup is smooth and helpful. Tim, that's sweet. Thank you so much. And Paige, I appreciate you echoing Tim's comment. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, you guys can get in touch with me through Moodle if you guys need to, but I guess we might as well wrap the show up, but I'm going to leave this going on a little bit and please do, you know, drop in any more comments that you guys have or anything else. And now you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that cool streamer thing that every streamer in the world does at the end of their show. Man, if you like the show, like and subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell and... Make sure that you are told about everything that goes on. We also do some really cool shows on Twitch and we'll have a really cool National Science Week show where we're going to be playing video games with scientists all over Australia and we'll be talking about games, talking about science in a really kind of chill way. So thank you very much for joining us, everyone. I really appreciate you guys coming. This is possibly the best turnout I've had on a YouTube show and it's been an absolute blast interacting with you guys. Thank you so much, everyone. And you know, I'll see you guys later again when I think we're doing another game later on. So all the best, everyone. I'll see you later.